Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Today we're continuing with our 2022 season preview as we take a look at the UCLA Bruins. Before we get into it, just want to thank you guys always for all the support you guys have shown the channel. Over 960 subscribers. We appreciate you guys checking out our videos, making comments, obviously subscribing to the channel if you like the content. Let's get into some UCLA football. Dill, in my opinion, I think UCLA fans, happy with the season, but what could have been? I mean, losses to Fresno State, losses to Arizona State, unacceptable. You can deal with the Oregon losses. You can deal with the Utah loss. But they you got to feel like they just left a little on the bone there. Program's moving in the right direction. That's what you need to see. Uh, Chip Kelly, obviously, they needed somebody who could bring that program back because it's really not been good under the last two coaching reigns. So they, I, I think you, you're you on, on the whole half because it looks like Chip Kelly's getting it going in the right direction. I'm not sure it's ever going to be an elite power program. Or at least it seems like maybe a harder school, especially with Lincoln Riley and, and USC. But you want a competitive team in UCLA, and I think they're getting there. Like they don't get rolled like they have been in the past few years. No, UCLA is definitely back. I mean, I'm I've been a huge Chip Kelly fan. When he did at Oregon at the college level, he's been one of the best offensive minds in the country. Let's get into the depth chart a little bit. It obviously start, starts with DTR. He, in my mind, could be this year's Kenny Pickett. He's coming into his fifth year, just like Kenny Pickett was last year coming into his fifth year. And all the reports I'm reading from spring ball is he's seeing the field a little bit slower. He's starting to be a little bit more calm. He's a little bit more composed. That's the exact same steps Kenny Pickett was doing at Pitt. I mean, a good third year, a good fourth year, and then he kind of exploded that fifth year. DTR is going to need to do the same thing because he doesn't have the weapons on the outside like he did last year. So DTR is going to need to be a star for this UCLA team this year. If they want to be, like, legitimately competitive in the Big 12, he needs to have a year where he doesn't need to, like, win the Heisman, but he needs to be hovering in the conversation. Not not necessarily top five, top ten, but it can't be – he can't be a slightly above average quarterback in the Pac-12 and have them expect to do anything because as good as Charbonnet is, you're right, there's just not enough on the rest of that field for him to be average. I'd like to see them use his legs a little bit more. I mean, he's most comfortable getting outside the pocket, throwing on the run. He is a phenomenal athlete. When you go back, I mean, going back and watching the Oregon game, like this dude flashes. He just needs to be a little bit more consistent. That's kind of been the story of his whole career there at UCLA is just consistency. He was a kid that he was young for his class, wasn't a full-time starter in high school till his senior year, and then it's always been about getting him more reps, getting him more reps. Leaves too many easy guy. throws. Leaves too many easy throws on the on on the field. I think, and because you see the flashes of magic, you yes. see the athleticism, you see the arm strength. If, if he just tightens the game up, he he's a really good quarterback. And I'm with you. I think, in addition to getting him outside the pocket, I think they should be running him more on design quarterback runs. I think that worked really well. It kept teams on their heels. And with the ways Charbonnet, you expect him to play. I think he's going to have open room if he. Yes. On read options and other sort of misdirections with Charbonnet drawing a lot of attention. So I want to talk about Zach Charbonnet. He's the next guy on my list. I mean, they're 1,100 yards last year, averaging almost six yards a carry. We're at Michigan fans. We saw him at Michigan. He had a Burns good true freshman high. year. And then sophomore year, not so much. But he was revitalized in that UCLA offense last year. And the biggest thing for me, like you knew he had the size and speed. But the shiftiness, like the ability to make secondary defenders miss just wasn't there. Michigan, a little stiff when he got in the open field. He looked much smoother there at UCLA. It's almost like he got his confidence back in the open field. And he, I think he's one of the best running but he, He's in my top five running back for the 2023 NFL draft. I think he's one of the best pure college football running backs in the country. He's great in pass protection as well. I mean, he's, in my my opinion, the best running back in the conference over Tavion Thomas. Guy. Zach Charbonnet is that dude, and he's going to need to step up too. Him and DTR are going to – the offense needs to go through those two guys because they're easily the two best guys on the field. Looking over to the wide receivers, they lose a guy like Greg Dolchich and Kyle Phillips. And Kyle Phillips was kind of the lifeline in that offense. Looking at who's going to step up. I mean, Jake, those were two so far and away their biggest pass-catching threats. Yes. is like just naturally a monster hole, like, and they need to replace it. 
And one of the guys they go to is Jake Bubba, 6'5", wide receiver from Duke, had 700 yards last year in a dreaded Duke offense. From what I'm reading, him and DTR are getting some good chemistry going. He's a guy that I really would like to see be be utilized a lot in this offense. 6'5", very, very big frame. He's good on the boundary, but he's also good working over the middle of the field. I think he'll be the wide receiver one and kind of that main guy to go Well, to. naturally, they're going to need a – more of a true wide out to take the Phillips role because the other two in, in Brown and Allen, good electric players, but yes, did a lot more of their work on swing passes and under rounds and all yes. sorts of other, not a ton of true wide receiver production, but really good athletes, really good with the ball in their hands. So I think it is nice to bring in a Jake Bobo who you think can play more of the traditional wide out and take yes. those snaps and let those other two do what they should be able to do best, which is make plays he was my next guy casimir allen was the next guy i want to mention when you're talking about the skill position you mentioned it best jake bobo is your steady receiver who's going to create some good separation he's going to be good in the red zone with the six five frame but you got casimir allen and i think that's a great point you made casimir allen is not going to be thrusted into this role of you need to be a, a uh a very rigid traditional wide receiver you can still let that guy cook i expect him to give them the ball out of the backfield like you said swing passes screens like Anything you can do to get Casimir Allen in some open space is going to be massive for the UCLA offense. And you can say really the same thing for Cam Brown, the transfer from Texas A&M. Both guys with some serious juice, not necessarily your traditional wide receiver, but we see those non-traditional wide receivers, the athletes, if you will, really thrive in college football offenses. Especially in a Chip Kelly offense where the design is, it's wacky. And I honestly think he could probably rein it in a little bit because there were a lot of penalties there were a lot of negative plays i saw that too a little bit of a just and i don't know i maybe it felt like he was doing too much but who am i to question chip kelly the guy is obviously a wizard on offense as much as he's not the greatest people person he he does know how to coach an offense so yeah i don't know that's just it looked like to me like they could chill it chill it down i i actually kind of agree in that oregon game i think oregon was giving them some like false snaps by the linebackers doing that little cheese But there were, like, what, five, six false starts. Like, that is just completely unacceptable. Looking at the offensive line, though, this is probably where you have the biggest question marks on the offense. Lose a guy like Sean Ryan, he is impossible to replace. He was one of your highest-graded tackles for the 2022 NFL Draft. They go to the transfer portal. They get a guy like Raekwon O'Neal from Rutgers. He was uh, uh, all-all Big Ten. uh, What is it? All Honorable mention. Honorable mention. He's going to need to step up. And and that's your biggest question is who is going to play the tackle spots. I, from everything I'm reading, they are pretty good on the interior. They're comfortable. The tackles, that's what's, that's the biggest question mark on this field. And that's something they're going to need to figure out in fall camp. I think it's a little too late to get in some tackle transfers from the portal. And so they're going to have to ride with the guys they got. And hopefully they can kind of bring the juice there. They're just going to need to like be good enough. Cause I mean, the Chip Kelly way of doing it isn't wholly reliant on the offensive line, which is probably good for them this year. Cause I don't think they're great anywhere personally. Like, yeah, they're getting back their interior guys, but wasn't good enough last year. In my opinion, they weren't physical. They weren't blowing guys around. So that it's probably going it, to, again, they're just going to shoulder so much weight on DTR. Because you know Charbonnet is going to be great. If you can get DTR to play like kind of what you thought you were going to get when he was a freshman, if he really developed into maybe yes. what any UCLA fan hoped, if he can be that guy, they can be they can be good enough on offense where it's not going to be a problem. He needs to be that guy though. Like the, it, last year, he didn't need to be that guy because you had some good guys on the uh, on the outside. Zach Charbonnet was a great running back. I think they're going to need to lean on DTR to really make some plays happen this year. And he's certainly capable of it. He just needs to do it on the field. Looking over to the defense side of the ball, it's Transfer City. And the two guys I want to highlight the most is the Murphy Twins. Shout out the Twins. Gabriel Murphy and Grayson Murphy, two guys who are highly, highly productive coming out of North Texas. Gabriel with 12 tackles for loss and seven sacks. Grayson with 14 and a half tackles for loss and eight and a half sacks. These guys look exactly alike. They play exactly alike, and they have almost the same stat line. But they're two really, really good guys who are going to give you good production on the edge. Yeah, and if, if those two can be confident starters, I think you got four guys. Because I personally think Carl Jones, Carl Jones Jr. Sorry, is can be really good if he just refines his game. Because you see the twitchiness of what you kind of like gives offensive linemen fits. You didn't see the consistency necessarily in, in how he got off blocks and, and set up pass rushes, but 
I think he's got the ability in Bo Calvert to serviceable. I think he'll be the number two behind Jones and probably one of the Gabriel uh, or, Mur- or one of the Murphy brothers, I should say. And but if you have that, you have four good guys, and uh, it's what that's what they're going to need. I, a lot of their defense was predicated on getting after quarterbacks, and a lot yes. of it was done by blitzing. So if they can avoid needing to blitz five, six, seven guys as much as they had to last year, they'll probably be better off. Yeah, I agree. Look into the linebacker spot. Massive transfer from Hawaii. I'm Darius Mouse Masua. He is a guy, 108 tackles, 14 tackles for a loss, and what, seven sacks. Again, a highly productive, non-Power 5 guy. That's going to be the story of this defense. We didn't highlight the Harvard transfer and the Duke transfer at the interior lines. They're going to be solid. But the linebackers, again, you're relying on some guys who are coming from non-Power 5 programs to really be good contributors. But you know I think who I'm looking it. at is Ale Kaho because he didn't play a ton last year. I think he was splitting reps with 40 and 15. <laughs> But you saw Flash as a big physical athletic uh, linebacker and obviously coming from Bama a couple of years yes. ago. He he probably is going to need to be a guy who, who can step in and be a really productive, play every down, and be their guy. Because you saw moments where he was really good, but there were also some moments where he didn't look wildly instinctive and wasn't wasn't in the right spot. It felt like maybe chasing a – a fake hand offer or all sorts of things. So if he can just tighten his game up to another guy who just feels like he's got potential and, and if he can compliment uh, Darius from Hawaii, that's you, you get two good inside linebackers. That's, that's like the first step to being a good defense. Yeah. And then towards the secondary, this is probably when you, when you say where are the question marks on the defense side of the ball, it's probably in the secondary level. Who's a guy like Quentin Lake? Um, really productive guys that are, are leaving the program. And now you're looking to who's coming in a guy that I want to highlight who didn't play much last year, Mo Osling. He was a guy I was very excited for last year. Saw some of his, some of his game in the COVID year was really popping on film. Got banged up this year. He's going to be a guy that I think a redshirt senior who can be a leader in the back end. But this is a, a, a unit that has a lot of new faces and they're going to need to jump. But that really needed quick. to that needed to turn over because they were not good enough last year. They a lot of yep. it seemed like a lot of penalties, not playing the ball in the air, and just felt like there was space on the field. It felt like guys were really open. And I don't know. I think the defensive coordinator hard to say whether he he got kind of pushed out or whether he resigned on his own. You it seemed like there was out. a it seemed like there was a shroud of mystery. And honestly, that didn't seem like an phenomenally coached unit last year. Just didn't look, didn't look like they ever had a system that was particularly tight. So I think maybe it is good to bring in a new face there and, and play something different. Because when they were playing well, they were getting after guys, they were blitzing and being disruptive. But there just were a lot of open. It seemed like just blown plays where guys were running free, guys were catching swing passes with thirty yards of space, and can't have it. Uh, Chip Kelly, who knows again what happened with the D coordinator, but it's probably about time. They do something new. They needed new faces in the secondary, need a new yep. face, maybe a coach. And I think you needed to turn over a new leaf because it probably wasn't good enough last year on D. Yeah, again, it just it just felt like that team left a little on the bone from it was like it seemed like it was the Chip Kelly culmination year. Like a ton of guys are coming back. You feel really good about the roster you have and a ten and two season, I think you're happy with. But throwing in those losses. Uh, the yeah, like, you're happy with but, the ten and two. <laughs> but throwing in those those Quite frankly, they could have beaten Oregon too. But you throw yeah. in the losses to a team like Fresno State with Jay Canner, who was like barely could walk in that game, and then Arizona State, who's in shambles, like unacceptable. And that's, I think, partially on DTR just throwing in those inconsistent games where he's just missing easy throws that you just need to make to win games. Taking a look at this 2022 schedule, DraftKings, for you guys who like to bet, eight and a half wins are, are the over under. So Vegas is projecting them to get around nine, eight wins. Starting off with Bowling Green at home, that's a – That's just a light out of conference schedule. Look at that. Which is, which is what I, I was on Twitter last yesterday with one of our listeners saying, kind of talking about there's no need to play a, a huge game out of conference. As much as the fans love it, the college football playoffs push you towards playing a light out of conference schedule, which I love what they do. Bowling Green, Alabama State, South Alabama before they get into the Pac-12, all at home, you should be humming. You should be really, really confident in, in what you guys are doing 
after those three pretty much preseason games. Like they will win those games by over 20 points. Then you get into the Pac-12. They should be 4-0 going into Washington's game. Colorado is a really weak team, previewed them. And I think Washington's very beatable, which sets up yeah. really well. You're going to be 5-0 and with Utah, the defending Pac-12 champs, coming to your place. You can't ask for much more. I'm not saying they're going to beat Utah, but 5-0, and the team's going to be buzzing. No doubt that hopefully the stadium will be buzzing. And then you wow. go into a really tough stretch where you go Utah, and then you have to go up to Oregon, and then Stanford. I mean, the – there's three teams that I don't think UCLA will be heavy favorites in, and that's Utah, Oregon, and USC. I think they they shouldn't be losing any other games. So nine and three is should be the floor for UCLA fans. What would be awesome is if you can get a win at Utah, Oregon, or USC, and maybe give yourself a shot at playing in the Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, I mean that's certainly the hope. I I think to say that it's they won't be like reasonably close to a Stanford or a Washington. I, I don't know if I see that. I mean, DTR is really going to need to take a step and be really, really good. And not saying you can't, but I think you're going to need to see a different version of DTR for that to be, yes. for those games to be like, well, we should definitely walk out, be Washington and beat Stanford. What version of the DTR? And this is what I was getting at last year. Is there's too many games where you play horrible and you drop a game that you shouldn't. And there's, they should be favorites in all of those games but three. Yeah, they could lose to Washington, but they're the better team. The only three teams in the Pac-12 who I don't think they're the better team would be USC, who maybe they are. The USC is good on paper. We don't know how good they are on the field. Yeah, An Oregon team that also has a lot of turnover. And then a Utah team that's losing a lot of guys. UCLA it's not floor, a strong Pac-12, so that's, that gives them yeah, some hope to UCLA's be really good. floor is low. But their ceiling is also very high because they have the talent. Like, if you have a talented quarterback like DTR who has a chance to play at a Heisman level, we've seen flashes of Heisman level play. I'm not saying he's going to win the Heisman, but I'm saying he's capable of it. That has to give UCLA fans a lot of optimism coming into the game that every single game you can win in the Pac-12. And so I'm not saying they're going to go undefeated, but I'm saying there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about this UCLA team. Going into 2022. I mean, you at the end of the day as a UCLA fan, have just I think you have to be happy. I think the, the program is trending in going the right, the right direction. Way. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think the transfers, I don't usually favor the transfers, but really what they did was take guys from small schools who dominated and are just looking to take a step up. So it's not like they were taking the guys who couldn't crack it at USC or – Yes. Or Washington. It's like they were taking guys who showed their dominant college football players at a lower level, but were really that's a good recipe for transfers, I think. I and they're doing it right. Yes, 100%. they have a couple guys from Alabama, but they've been there for two years or three years at this point now. And Absolutely. they've played decent football. So And we'll leave it on that. Once again, appreciate you guys obviously for rocking with the Rock Boys. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. UCLA, a team that you got to watch out for in the Pac-12. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.